Hey folks, welcome to the Lady K Sailing mini series called Boat 101. Back in the Bahamas, we did a mini-series called Boat How To, and we got some really good feedback. So in this follow-up mini-series, we're talking all about boat basics. We're gonna use our experiences to answer the most common questions that we got asked and give you some inside insight into the boating basics from the Lady K Sailing team. Hey guys, so since I built our system, which is sort of right there, I get asked all the time, what's an amp hour? How many do I need for my boat? And how much solar do I need or wind or whatever else do I need to actually refill those batteries? So today we're gonna actually talk all about amp hours. And uh, I'm here at Lady K so I can show you guys firsthand exactly how we did things on Lady K, what worked, what didn't, and hopefully give you guys a good understanding of the amp hour. Uh, and it could be a confusing subject. So uh, I guess let's get started. Ooh, hey guys, it is chilly on the Great Lakes right now. Wish I was a little bit further south, but uh, those things are coming. Anyway, we're gonna talk about amp hours and I've helped design a lot of solar systems since doing Lady K solar systems, sort of from scratch and off internet research without any real help a couple years ago. And it's been really successful. I made a few changes along the way, but ultimately it works. So I've helped other people design theirs and I wanted to answer a few of those frequently asked questions about your whole electrical system. And number one is always, how many amp hours do I need? That's a complicated question. And right now I'm just gonna talk about batteries. I don't really wanna talk about power generation and solar. We'll talk about that in a few minutes. Um, just to keep it simple though, um, how many amp hours do I need? There's sort of a couple of questions first. Number one is how many is your boat gonna use in a 24 hour period based on how you use your boat? And number two is how many amp hours can you afford to pay back? Amp hours and batteries are like a credit card. Everything you take out of that battery, you have to be able to afford to pay it back or you're gonna damage the batteries. So that's all we're gonna talk about as far as paying it back. That's your solar and all your other stuff. But uh, when you talk about amp hours, um, you have to look at what is your boat using. So let's talk about the number one thing on every boat, unless you have a freezer, the number one thing is a fridge. Refrigeration is going to be your biggest draw almost all the time. Uh, we ran laptops and big screens and stuff so we could watch movies, but the fridge was by far and away the one thing that used the most. And that's because it's always on, it's always in use. Um, and, and there's a duty cycle there. It's not always, always being a compressor, but I mean, the thing is always on. It's always gonna be shutting on and off and cycling. Um, the fridge is going to absolutely be the number one concern. And I know from this boat, we had an evaporator system with a condenser and all that stuff. And then we also had one of those Dometic fridge freezers. Um, and I can tell you a, a reasonable fridge system is going to draw about five amps while it's running. So if it runs for an hour, you have then spent five amp hours. Make sense? Most fridges are about five amps. I think our old one was like six and a half or something and the Dometic's about five. So you have to see and get a good battery gauge, a good battery monitor so you can see how many amps it's actually drawing while it runs. Xantrax Link Pro battery monitor, something like that with the shunt and you'll actually be able to see, turn that fridge on and watch that monitor and see, oh, it's pulling 4.8 amps, five amps, whatever it is. So if you know your fridge is gonna pull five amps every hour or five amp hours every hour, then you have to also figure out how often the fridge runs. What's the duty cycle? And the duty cycle is how often in that 24 hour period that fridge is actually pulling those five amps. Because when the compressor shuts off, it's not pulling any amps. So it's just fine. Most fridges are about 60% of the time, um, just to make round numbers, let's say half the time, um, or let's say 10 hours a day, uh, which is a little bit less than 50% duty cycle in a 24 hour period. So if it's gonna pull five amp hours, every hour for 10 hours, it's gonna need 50 amp hours. Pretty straightforward. So we know our boat needs 50 amp hours. That's it. We know how much battery we need now, we need 50 amp hours of battery life. Maybe go a little bigger, obviously, for that cushion, um, but also you have to make a, like a whole spreadsheet of this. The boat use, or the fridge uses 50 amp hours in a 24 hour period. I'm gonna use the VHF and it pulls, you know, half an amp for this many hours. So I need five amp hours for that. I need five for this, 10 for this, et cetera, et cetera. Um, Lady K was pulling while being lived on at anchor was pulling about 170 amp hours a day. So 75 or so of that was the fridge. The other hundred was charging laptops, making YouTube videos, charging the camera equipment, 
and on and on and on. You probably won't use 170 a day. We just happen to pretty robust electrical system in the boat with a high gain Wi-Fi antenna and all the camera equipment charging uh, and the desktop computer running so I could make these videos. Um, so 170 a day, I know I need at least 170 amp hours for my boat. So when people ask how many amp hours do I need, that's the answer. You have to figure out how much you're drawing and accommodate it and then, you know, add 50% or 25%, whatever you can afford in a little bit bigger batteries to make sure that you're okay. Now, if I need 170 a day, I have to start looking at batteries and you look at like a typical deep cycle marine battery is going to be about 100 amp hours. The problem is that's going to be a lead acid battery and I'm only going to talk about this once because it just confuses everything. Um, 100, 100 amp hour lead acid battery, you can only discharge, discharge it to 50% before it gets damaged. So that 100 amp hour battery is really 50. So let's just call it a 50. Let's call it what it is. Don't read the, the number on the tag that says amp hours. Divide that, cut it in half. That's what it really is because you don't want to go below 50% of course. So I need, let's say 200 to be comfortable. So I'm going to need four of these 50 amp hour batteries all wired in parallel. And now I get my 200 amp hours a day. So I'm happy. That's essentially how you build your solar system based on batteries. Now, let me show you how I did it with Lady K. And this gets a little tricky because they're golf carts. So maybe a little lesson in wiring here. So mind the mess. Uh, so winterizing. Uh, anyway, so here's the batteries. We've got four Trojan T105s. Now these are golf cart batteries, so they are six volt. They're each 225 amp hours, but they're only six volts. So I've had to take a 225 and a 225 wire them together in series to make 12 volt. Now, because they're in series, it doesn't increase the amp hours. I don't get to add 225 and 225. Um, they're actually wired together to make 12 volts. So you're getting like half of the voltage from one, half of the voltage from the other for a total of 225 amp hours, even though there's two batteries. So I've got my 225 amp hours here wired in, ser wired in series so I get my 12 volt. Now, we said earlier that my boat's going to need about 200, and this is 225 but this is lead acid. So this is really half of 225, 112, and I need 200. So I'm gonna have to actually double this. So that's what I did. Two more golf carts. These are wired in parallel, so series and series, and then the two different series banks are wired in parallel. Wiring in parallel is how you double your amp hours. Voltage stays the same because we're going positive to positive, negative to negative, and consider each two batteries one bank. Um, that way I'm getting 225 amp hours here at 12 volt, 225 here at 12 volt. Now you divide it in half because they're lead acid and I come out with 225 amp hours. We said we need 200, we're golden, we got 225. We actually have a little bit like a 12 or 13% excess of what we actually need and 200 was above our actual needs anyway. So really we're in pretty good shape with these four golf cart batteries and this is sort of the cheapest way to go. Golf cart batteries are dirt cheap. They last for five or six years. I've never had any problems with them. Um, keep the water topped up and don't discharge below 50% and they're really good. And being golf carts, if you do discharge below 50%, they'll take the abuse a lot better than you know a Group D or a Group 27 uh, regular deep cycle marine. These things are meant to be abused. Anyway, so that's how we figured out Lady K's amp hours. I did all the math, figured out we need about 170 and I ended up with 225. Hopefully that makes sense. Okay guys, it was way too cold at the boat, so we're going to jump back to the classroom for the rest of this video. And we're going to talk now, we know that Lady K needs 200 amp hours in a 24 hour period to run the fridge and the, the cameras and all that kind of stuff. So we need 200. We have to, we're going to use a little less than that. So we want to make sure whatever solar system or power generation we use is going to make 200. And this is what you want to do with your boat. So the way to figure out how many watts of solar you need on the back of your boat um, is a pretty simple formula. Um, basically, the hours or the amp hours you're going to make, amp hours made, is equal to however many watts of solar divided by the voltage of the system times the hours of sunlight. So let's say 100 watts of solar divided by 12 volts, because we're talking about 12 volt volts here, um, times let's say five hours of sunlight. So um, let's say 100 watts divided by 12 volts times 5 is 41.67, 42. So if we have a 100 watt panel and 5 hours of sunlight and the boat is 12 volt, which it is, we will make 42 amp hours every 24 hour period. Now we're going to make that all in the 5 hours of sunlight. 
but nonetheless will make 42 amp hours in a day and a night, so 24 hours. And we know that 42 is not enough, what we want is about 200. Um, so if you just sort of amplify that, you have um, 200 watts of solar, and we divide that by 12 volts and times it by five hours of sunlight, Two hour, 200 watts of solar is gonna give us 83 amps or amp hours per day. Um, the magic number with Lady K is about 500. So if we have 500 watts divided by 12 volts times five hours of sunlight, that's gonna equal almost 210 amp hours we're gonna bring in in that five hours. So we're making 210 a day and we're using about 170, we said, but we're gonna amp it up a little bit and call it 200. We're gonna make 210. So we're golden, 500 is the magic number. Um, now panel sizes are all different and we ended up with 550 watts because the panels at the time that sort of fit the boat and fit the project were 275 a piece. So we have 550 watts of solar. Um, and it actually really does work. Lady K in our experience would use 170 on a, you know, a very taxing day. Let's say it's raining all day. Maybe we'll use almost 200 because we're watching movies or something. Uh, but ultimately we were able to replace that with five hours of sunlight. So not too bad. And, and that's sort of what you need to do with your boat. You have to understand that um, you don't want to do too much battery because you won't be able to pay it back. Now we said we have a total of 225 amp hours considering it to be lead acid and the way it's wired and all that stuff. Well, we make almost 225 in five hours. So really we have enough solar that we can recharge our entire battery bank in probably about six hours of reasonable sunlight. And I mean, you have five hours of almost direct sunlight and then you have a few hours before and a few hours after where you sort of make a lot less amps. Uh, but nonetheless, you are making amperage. So we can completely fill the batteries in Lady K, all 225 amp hours in really one afternoon or you know one sunny day. Um, so it actually worked really well. Now, when we woke up in the morning with our 225 amp hours and the fridge running all night and, you know, lights on and things like that, we'd be down to about 80% of 225 and it would be full by 11 a.m. So we really overdid it on the battery bank and overdid it on the solar. But that's how to figure it out. If you're trying to figure out how many amp hours do I need, um, figure out your boat first. Um, if the fridge is going to pull five an hour, 60% of the time, figure out the math. Uh, if you figure out the whole boat needs like 100 amp hours a day, and that's everything running on the heaviest day with all the things on and you're stuck in the rain and you can't go anywhere and the engine's not running, um, you need 100 a day? Well, no problem. How do you get 100 amp hours? You do about 300 watts of solar because that's 125 amp hours in a five hour period. Um, that formula again, amp hours made is equal to the watts of solar divided by the voltage of the batteries, 12, times the hours of sunlight. So amp hours made equals watts divided by volts times hours of sunlight. Uh, if you live somewhere where you don't get as much sun, you gotta reduce that. Maybe it's not five hours, maybe it's four. Maybe you live in the Bahamas and it's like eight. We did really well in the Bahamas with our solar setup. So hopefully that helps you guys understand amp hours, uh, how much like battery bank you need and how much solar you need to you know, rejuvenate that battery bank or to repay that credit after you've spent it. Now you can also get wind and things like that. And I'll, I'll throw in a quick comment here about wind. And there's a reason Lady K doesn't have wind. So our 550 watts of solar um, generates about 45 amps per hour. Um, 45 amps is a lot. Um, when, you, when the sun's shining straight on them, 45, I think the highest we've seen is somewhere over 50 um, amps. Now, the, the panels are rated for 550, but that's in the factory where they rate them. When you go to the Bahamas, they'll overperform what the factory said they will do, uh, which is pretty cool. So we were bringing in, let's say, 50 amps in an hour. Um, that's, and solar's about a buck a watt. Now, 50 amps in an hour, a wind turbine, uh, on a good day in the right amount of wind, you might be bringing in 15 amps uh, in an hour, or 15 amp hours every hour. And a good wind generator is like four grand. So why not spend a grand on solar panels, bring in 50 amps instead of four grand for 15 amps or 10 amps or whatever it is. Now, the argument, that's an argument against wind. Now the argument for wind is wind works when the sun's not up uh, and wind works when it's raining and all that kind of stuff. So the perfect system I think is probably enough solar to cover all of your needs. Like Lady K has 550 watts, 208 amp hours, 
um, per day and we use less than 200, we're right on the mark. Now, if it's going to be shady or rainy for a couple of days, back it up with a couple of wind generators. Perfect. Then when the sun isn't shining and it's not working at its full efficiency, the wind is going to pick up the slack. We, a, we went a cheaper route and we bought a suitcase generator, 2000 watt Yamaha generator. Um, and we ran that every once in a while if it was going to be stormy for a few days or whatever it was. Um, and that's fine. That's the cheaper way to do it. Um, I think we got it off Craigslist for like 250 bucks. Um, it, that did everything we needed it to do. So um, that's it. That's, uh, that's amp hours. Hopefully you have a better understanding of amp hours and how much battery your boat needs, how to make a, a battery or sorry, like a, a power projected need for your boat. Like throw it in a spreadsheet and figure it out. What's the fridge use? What do the lights use? get a Xantrax battery monitor so that you can actually look at these things on the shunt and see what they really truly do do pull out of the batteries and amps every hour. Uh, and then from knowing what you need, you can base that and actually make a solar system out of it or make a solar slash wind system out of it. That's it for this week of Boat 101 from Lady K Sailing. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, if you like it, give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button so you can see all the videos we release every Friday. And if you want to help keep the videos going and keep us in camera gear and all that fun stuff, consider becoming a patron, patreon.com forward slash Lady K Sailing. You can send us a couple of bucks every Friday when we drop a new episode. Anyway, we'll see you guys next week. All the love from the Lady K team. Bye.